So it seems like Farzan has some insane potential, but there's a catch. And in this video, I am going to give you an honest showcase of Farzan, reveal to you some unique things about her, and most importantly, I'll show you some really interesting teams you can build with her. But first, a quick word from today's sponsor. This video is sponsored by World War Defense Battle. Are you feeling nostalgic for some great side-scrolling action? Well, this game can help you get that dosage of retro 90s arcade games. Set in a fictional war, go through stage by stage and defeat the bosses by becoming a commander, and summon soldiers to help you win the fight. And there are a total of 20 different soldier classes that you can deploy strategically, but make sure to use items to upgrade your soldiers, which you can also combine with a simple crafting system by using various materials. And don't forget your commander, there's many different skills you can use in battle, like a lightning bow or a power blade, so you can always adapt to your enemies. I mean, guys, most games these days are super complex. This is a fun and simple single-player campaign you can go through at your own pace, so make sure to use my link in the description, download World War Defense Battle, and help support my channel. Look, I know the title might sound weird, but bear with me. Farzan is essentially a niche support unit for animal damage dealers. However, there are several things you need to be aware about her when building your teams. Now for this video, I am using Favonius Warbow and a regular support damage build utilizing Noblesse Force set. Keep in mind, it really depends on team comp what artifact sets she should use. And I'll talk about this later on, but here, I just want to show her support damage build. Also, she's Constellation 0 and her talents are raised to 668. Okay, so some of you might be expecting that since she's using damage dealer main stats, she deals good damage, right? Well, not really. Her skill's initial hit deals 3,685, then just like Kujo Sara, her next charge shot is powered up and if she shoots it, first it deals 3,071 damage and afterwards, a pressurized collapse deals additional 2,675 damage. So in total, the skill delivers roughly 9.5k damage. Obviously, that's laughably low. But what's even worse is that this skill supposedly provides crowd control from that pressurized collapse? I mean, you can take a look at this footage I'm showing, and you tell me if this looks anything like crowd control you would expect from an animal unit. On the flip side, after using her skill, the first passive allows Farzan to increase charge speed of her charge shot, and it will also shred enemies' animal resistance by 30%. But let's take a look at the burst. Farzan deals 19,565 damage, and afterwards, this polyhedron she summoned travels in a triangle shape providing two very important things. First of all, when it's activated and after it travels to each corner, it will do a small non-damaging explosion and enemies caught in it will have their animal resistance reduced by 30% for 4 seconds. Second of all, characters in party will have their animal damage boosted, depending on the burst talent level. In this case, everyone's animal damage is increased by 28.8%. Now sometimes, this burst won't consistently reduce enemies' animal resistance and this all has to do with its positioning. You can see here in split second, Wanderer's damage drops when the polyhedron is on its way to debuff the enemy. So to remedy this situation, I could place the burst by backing away further from this ruin guard, and then he should stay within all three pulses of the triangle the burst is traveling along. I mean... Yeah, that's geometry for you, I guess, but honestly, just make sure to fight around it to keep up the consistency of the debuff. Now, the good news are, when the burst buffs animal damage, it has a massive range. Here's Nahida's burst for comparison, and as you can see, everyone still gets their animal damage increased after running so far away from the burst. But you don't use Farazan for personal damage. She's a buffer, and perhaps, maybe a battery as well? Sadly, it's even worse than you think. She will only generate particles after hitting an enemy with her charge shot that's powered by her skill. So there's even a chance you could miss it. And all you get for this are two measly particles. But what's even worse is that her burst cost is 80. So for example, when using her in a team with Wanderer, she needs about 260% energy recharge, assuming she also catches her Favonius particles. If not, she needs like 300%. And if she doesn't have Favonius, oh boy, we're talking about getting like 320% ER. Now you might be wondering, why the hell is my video titled that she's broken, when all I've done so far was just pointing out her shortcomings? Well, I mean, she is a niche unit that's really good for boosting animal damage dealers, but at the same time, she's extremely clunky to use, barely generates particles, needs a lot of energy, and even her damage is negligible. I mean, I could slap on her crit damage gear and powerful supports, and she would still only deal 150k damage with all that effort put into it. Well, the reality is, she is a really good niche support if you can work around her problems. Even at C0 in certain teams, she's a valuable asset. However, in just a few minutes, I will reveal to you what exactly makes her broken, but for now, let me quickly showcase her team building potential. 
Okay, so basically there's three guys that desperately want Farzan's attention. First of all, the tallest man alive, Xiao, can deal some really exciting damage when Farzan joins the party. Now, when using the build I showcased before, everything goes fine for two rotations, but on the third one, Xiao runs into energy problems, and that's because he needs a good animal battery, like Jean or Sucrose to help him out, because C0 Farzan can barely keep her own burst up. I mean, going triple animal with Xiao is fine, but keep in mind that Farzan is just here to boost damage. Now, moving Moving on to Hazo, his burst costs 40. Basically, in a team with a couple of Favoni's weapons, he can be built with low ER, and I have to admit, it's a really fun team to use when Farzan and Hazo are in a comp with double pyro, which 99% of the time will be Benny and Shangling. Seeing him punch the air for 170k damage is thrilling to say the least. And the only thing that I wish Farzan could do was provide a little bit of help with crowd control, so Hazo could land his skill on more enemies consistently. Finally, I already talked about him in my previous video, but Farzan is definitely great for Wanderer. First of all, his burst doesn't make up the majority of his damage, so skipping it once in a rotation is fine. Now, if you use Farzan in the team comp, then she can increase his damage by about 38%. Compared to Benny, he can increase Wanderer's damage by 60%. While this may seem weird, usually Wanderer has low attack and Benny's burst is super valuable for characters with low attack builds. However, I found it doesn't hurt to just combine the best of both worlds and use Farzan together with Benny if you want to see some big damage numbers from Wanderer. Also, Farzan has this passive that every 0.8 seconds when the burst is deployed, one animal hit gets amplified, but the damage increase is minuscule. I mean, look, this buff scales with her base attack, so only the weapon's base attack matters, and if she uses, let's say, Favonius compared to Skyward Harp, the damage difference is like 240. Sure, this buff can happen multiple times, but even if it's like 10 hits amplified, you're looking at 2400 bigger damage. So just use energy weapon on her and treat this passive as something that's nice to have. But all in all, I would say building teams with Wanderer and Hazo is pretty easy. Just go double animal, double pyro, or you could also use something like double geo or double hydro or even freeze for this matter. And as for Xiao, well, just keep in mind Farzan's energy generation is lackluster, so you'll probably need to bring a battery into the team. But that's C0 potential we're talking about. Now it's time to reveal why she's so broken. So, let's talk about her constellations. The first one gives her an additional charge shot that can create pressurized collapse. It won't give her two more particles, and I don't see a reason using it other than to mess around in open world. Now, the second constellation? Here's where things get really interesting. Her burst by default has 12 second duration, but with C2, it gains 6 additional seconds, and I gotta say, this improves a lot of rotations she's in. Normally, since Benny's burst is more valuable compared to Farzan's, if they're both in a team, I would usually start rotation with her, and it wouldn't last all the way until I'm done using someone like Wanderer. But with this constellation, it's a nice upgrade for the last teammate in the rotation, so they can benefit from the burst longer. Moving on, C3 and C5 are just damage increases. They don't really matter. Although C5, which is the burst upgrade, improves its animal damage boost it provides for the team, so going from level 8 to 11, everyone can enjoy additional 5.4% animal damage boost. Now, C4, there's a lot of text in here, but essentially, the powered up charge shot can now restore up to 4 energy, depending on enemy count, and the second shot also works for this, so if you bother using both of them, she can gain 8 energy. But the biggest of them all, the reason why Farzan becomes an insane animal support is all thanks to her final constellation. So three things happen. When the burst is used, animal crit damage is increased by 40%. Then when active characters deal animal damage, they create pressurized collapse. So now there's some good crowd control going. And finally, there is no mention of this in the description, but every second collapse will create two animal particles. And since I was able to create seven collapses, these particles popped up four times, including the moment Farzan uses her burst. And in total, she can now generate eight animal particles, 10 if she uses her skill. Essentially, C6 Farzan becomes becomes an insane battery, her crowd control is suddenly really decent, and of course she gives a massive boost to animal damage dealers. To me, C0 Farzan and C6 Farzan are two different characters, and I'm not sure how I feel about this. So, do you need a C6 Farzan in order to enjoy using her? Of course not, in some teams like with Wanderer, she's pretty good at C0, but if you want to get at least a small upgrade for her, C2 is definitely a great improvement. I honestly think you should not feel pressured to pull for her, but I wanted to make this video just to show you what a huge difference C6 brings to the table. I mean, in the long run, if you keep playing the game, maybe someday you'll get her to C6, but if you do decide to go hard with this banner, it takes about 240 to 250 wishes to get all of her constellations. And if you like the 
warned her that on this banner, on average, you should be able to get a C1, maybe C2, depending on how lucky or far into the pity you are. But is it worth it? Of course not. If you are financially stable or have saved up enough wishes and you like the idea of using powerful animal booster, then sure, go for it. Otherwise, I don't think you should worry too much about C6 Farzan. She's a bit hard to use at C0, but there are teams you can put her in. It's not like there's a ton of options Animal has when it comes to boosting the damage. So those guys will be happy to have Farzan join the team. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video. I'd appreciate if you could leave a like and check out today's sponsor. Thanks for watching and see you soon.